Okay, before I start, what's a review? This will lead into today's new angle. Uh, angle B, that would be called A. Angle B, I might do this a lot today, but oh well, 27. I'm going to be doing it a lot. Don't care though. 20, what type of angle? Central angle. Central angle, yep. And somebody tell me, how do you find a central angle? Very first, one of the very first things we talked about. Three, how do I find a central angle? Um, arc measure. Arc measure. In this case, it would be the same as arc. Uh, CA. CA, good. Uh, over here, angle F. I refer to that as a, what type of angle here? Angle F. That's going to be a three again. Nope. Actually, you know, you're off the hook, Kyle. This is reviewing. I want to hear from five. Inscribe. Good work. And how do I find angle F? What's the rule here? How do I find it? Uh, let's hear from 10. Oh, perfect. Uh, how about 23? All right. We're on seven. Half of the arc, in this case, half of arc EG. All right, today, the third and final type of angle that can be located inside a circle. All right, you got central can be inside, inscribe can be inside, and then what I'm going to show you today, take a look. Uh, focus on this angle here, DCE, angle DCE. Everyone take a look at that angle. Can we all agree it's not central? All right, that's not central, and it's not inscribed. Right, so I'm going to have a new name for it, and this is my name. It's not a mathematical name. I call this a floater angle. All right, I call that a floater angle. Why do I call it a floater angle? Where's the vertex? Kind of just floating inside the circle, right? Now, also, does everyone see the three other flo flo floater angles that surround it? ACD, ACB, and BCE. So there's four there. I'm just picking DCE. All right, I'm not going to have a proof for you. We're just going to get right down to it. How do you find a floater angle? It's a little bit more involved than inscribed and central work. How to find a floater angle. To find a floater, you do take one half of something. Ooh, but the thing you take one half of is two arcs added together. I'm going to add two arcs together and take half of it. The first arc is going to be the arc that belongs to the floater angle. So it's arc measure. That's the first thing. I'm going to take its arc measure and add it to, ready? DC has a vertical angle, doesn't it? That arc measure, all right, because they're not the same. All right, so I'm going to take its arc measure and add it to the vertical angle's arc measure. That is how I find a floater, where the vertex is not from the center or on it. It's just floating in there. All right, can you go back to DCE? Don't go ahead of me here. Go to, back to DCE. Can you find the two arcs I would add together before I take one half here? So DCE, what arc belongs to DCE here? Uh, let's go six. DE, so I would take arc DE. And add it to, now look at its vertical angle and name the arc that belongs to its vertical angle. 13? Nope. There you go. 15? AB. AB. Do we have 13 here? Sorry. I, for some reason, I thought that was Brody. For some reason. Sorry. I got you on the next one, though. Don't worry. Everyone good? Yes, floater angles. We're all good. Okay. Let's go over a couple examples here. Number one. Angle X is not a central angle, all right? That's not the center where those two chords intersect, all right? So, you know, the answer is not 88. You get off easy, though, here. What arc belongs to angle X? Okay, 88. Plus, what arc belongs to its vertical angle? 28? 86. There you go. So everyone all right on how I'm going to start finding floater angles. And I always get a chuckle because everyone goes to their calculator. Hey, honors kids, what's halfway in between 88 and 86? Okay, thank you. Put those calcs away. Oh, I see what he's talking about. I didn't see that. 
that's a basic one. Now we up it a little bit with difficulty. Now I want to find the arc if I know the floater angle 65. And are we hey, hey, are we good on why 65 is a floater versus central versus inscribed? All right, good. So 65, the floater, is equal to one half. Name the arc that belongs to 65. Five? One hundo plus what's its vertical angles arc? 23? Roundhouse, you in a second. No, I don't even say it. I know it. Twenty-one. Uh, yeah, here. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for letting me know you were here. Yep. What? What? What's the vertical angles arc that belongs to sixty-five? X. X. Yes. All right. Now, quick talk on how to solve this algebraically. Many of you, could you just distribute the one half? Yes. That's not how I roll, though. I'm not a big fan of one half x and trying to deal with that. So instead, I get rid of the one half right away. I multiply both sides by two. Okay. Again, you guys want to multiply, distribute the one half? That's your call. Your call. I just don't like the uh, one half hanging out there, so I get rid of it right away. So I have one thirty now. And just so, hey, when I multiply by two, that cancels out the one half. It's not like I distribute the two. Nope, they cancel out. So I'm just left with what was inside the parentheses. And now I move the 100 over, and that arc measure was 30 degrees. All good? All right, let's keep upping the difficulty level. Uh, I don't care about the ratios right away. Do we all see angle X as floater, though? That's floater. All right. First thing, before I start labeling my arcs, how do you find it? Name the two arcs I'm going to add together here. All right. To find angle X, which is a floater, name the two arcs I'm going to have to add together. Uh, let's go 12. All okay, right. So ABC plus DFG. Yep. All right, so let's help me find it. And what have we been doing all unit and heck all year when I see these numbers in a ratio? We've been putting X's with them, right? But I'm not going to put an X with them because we're already calling this angle X. So is everyone all right if I pick a different variable to put with them? All right, because if watch, if I call ABC 2X, I'm, kind, I'm telling you mathematically that that angle, this arc is double that, which is not true. So I, I, that's why I don't like using X in this case. I'm just going to put a Y. So hopefully your minds aren't blown there. Uh, and then on CD, I'll put 3Y. Bless you. DFG, I'll put Y. And AG, I'll put 4Y. And what are we doing with all of them to find Y? Can you come up with uh, an equation for me? Because there's actually multiple equations you can do here. Uh, 14? Uh, 360 2y plus 3y plus y plus 4y. Yep. I could do that. Anybody want to just do 2y and 3y and set it equal to 180? Or you could do 4y and y and set it equal to 180 because that's a diameter. Semicircle measures 180. Uh, I'll go the 10y equals 360. y equals 36. And then again, I don't need to plug it into every arc. I'm only concerned with arc A, B, C, and D, F, G. So after you plug it in, can somebody please give me those two arc measures after I'm done plugging in? Uh, 17, when you're ready. Um, ABC. 72. And DFG. 36. There you go. And I should end up with, what, 54 here? Questions. And then we come to everybody's favorite part of the units. King-sized circle problems. All right, why do I call them king-sized? Well, heck, we're going what, A through E here. All right, A through E. Piece of advice before you guys get going, as you get ahead of me. Don't try to, don't try to answer this by going to A to B to C to D to E. Your success in a king-size circle problem depends on if you know the arc measures or not. 
So I am not even going to ask you anything about part A yet. When we, every time we do a king size circle problem in class, and hopefully the same thing when you do one by yourself, find as many arc measures as you can. Don't even look at parts A through whatever. Try to find as many arc measures as you can. So let's do that first. 110 is AE8. So follow the letters A to E to H measures 110 degrees. Arc AG is 80 degrees. And I also tell you the ratio between AE and EH, 2 to 3. So AE, I can throw a 2X on. EH, I can throw a 3X on there. Fine, stop. You're just going to confuse yourself and get stressed out. Don't start looking at part A yet. Can you help me find any arc measure now? Also, very overlooked every time, and it drives me nuts. What's this called here, AOB, this line segment? The diameter. And it cuts the circle into two congruent parts called what? Semicircles. I heard that. Semicircles, which measure what? 180. So remember that. Look for diameters. All right. So let me go back to my numbers now. Do you know any arc measures now? Or set something up for me that will help me find an arc measure. Five. Any arcs you know? HB is 70. Great. Because Claire said, hey, if that's 110, the semicircle up top measures 180. I got 70 left over. Great job, Claire. Next up, anything else you can find? 12? Uh, how about we find AE and EH? 2X plus 3X equals 110. 5X equals 110. X equals 22. Go ahead, plug it back in. Plug 22 back in, and I think AE is going to be 44 degrees, and EH is going to be 66. Uh, the only arc I don't know yet is GB. A little help? GB, five, I'm fired today, Claire. 100. 100, yep, because the bottom circles, a sem the bottom part's a semicircle. Watch how easy this becomes when I know my arcs and I don't have to grind away and try to find a mid-problem. Ready, part A, what's the measure of GB? Oh, already found it, 100. Again, maybe I wouldn't have been able to find that so quickly if I just automatically went to part A without finding the arcs. Oh, look at B. What's the measure of arc EA? Done. Did it already. 44. All right, now we're going to have to think a little bit. How about the measure of angle EFA? Locate that angle EFA. It's definitely inside the circle, isn't it? It's inside, so it's got to be one of three types. 19, is it central? Not here? Just was on fire. Eight? No. Seven? Great. Is it central? Inscribe. So it's got to be? Floater. Let's do it. One half of these two arcs added up. What's the arc measure for EFA? What arc does it belong to? 19? 22. Um, what's the question? Sure. E EFA, Patrick. EFA. Yeah. It has an arc measure of what? Oh, oh. Um. Oh, you mean the EA? <laughs> yeah. E EA is 44. Yes, it is. Plus 100. Plus its vertical angles. Thank you. 100. Good job. All right. Oh, wow. Look at you. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That'll be... It's fine. It's all good. We're good. 72 degrees, everybody. Uh, before I move on, what am I going to have you do with that 72? Tyler? Put it in your diagram. You never know. You may need it later on if you get stuck. So 72. All good? All right. How about part D now? What's D? The measure of angle FEB. Four. FEB. Let's see. FEB. Central? Uh, no. Inscribe. Yeah. 
There you go. So now it comes down, do I know the rule or not? Half of the arc. What arc measure is it drawn to? Uh, four again. There we go. Half of hundo. Yep. So that's going to be 50 degrees. Plop that in there. That's 50. And I got one more here. Usually the last one's the trickiest for some reason. The measure of angle OHD. Whoa, whoa. That's not central. And hopefully we don't get, that's not inscribed either. Inscribed, the t sides of an inscribed angle have to be chords and that's a radius and a tangent. So no, no. And it's not floater. So what do I do if it's none of the three we've talked about? That usually means it's a fact we've talked about. All right, if it's not one of the three angles, it's a fact we've talked about before. Uh, 11, no. 18? Hi. What's OH? Good. So what about DHC? What happens when those two meet? Don't need a calculation. I just know the rule for that. No, don't turn your pages. I'm not done yet. Are we okay here? Let me show you why it's important to label your diagram as you move along. Don't write this down. I'm just going to add in a part F. Let's say I went now, find the measure of angle DEB. Everyone look on your paper where DEB is. Is it central? No. Is it inscribed? Nope. Is it a floater? And is this one where it's a radius drawn to a point of tangency? Whoa. We're out of options, aren't we? Sometimes it won't take a circle fact to get your answer. It'll just take plain old geometry. Remember that 50 we just found? Good thing we wrote it in because we're looking for the angle right next to it. And what's the relationship? Linear pairs. And what do you know about them? They are? All right. Hey, sometimes it won't take a circle fact. All right. So just don't get grinded in your mind. Oh, I need a fact. I need a fact. Sometimes you don't. It's just as easy as linear pairs are supplementary. Okay, so all good. So it's not all circle facts. All right, one king size doesn't make you great. One more, and then you're on your own. Woo! And here's the reason why I don't want you to just look over everything, read everything. Because if you just, if you got, if your eyes just went to this right here about the angles being in that ratio, you totally missed a huge fact above it. What's so important, not ABCs inscribed. Anybody see another fact? Probably we're going to have to use. Read through. What else? What do you got, Lisa? Yeah. If I don't see that, this problem is going to be pretty darn difficult for me later on. All right, let's fill in the triangle with our uh, 4x, 3x, and 2x. Remember, it's uh, angles, not, not arc measures. ACB, I got 4x. CAB, I have 3x. And ABC, I have 2x. And remember what I said, don't even look at the different parts. Can you find the arc measures? Uh, what am I going to do with all three of these to get me started? 22, what can I do with all three of these? Here's what I found. This thing is killing me. Yep, 3x plus 2x plus 4x equals 180, 180 degrees on the triangle. Go ahead, everyone, find those angles for me. And we'll talk here in a second, 9x. Go ahead, plug your angles back in when you're ready. All right, what are my angles up here? What are your three angles when you're ready? 26. Um, BAC is 60. BAC is 60. 
You sure? No, you're right. You're right. I'm wrong. 60, yep. Yeah. Uh, BCA is 80. 80, yep. And then uh, CBA is 40. 40, good. All right, how about the arcs now? All three of these angles are inscribed, right? So to find the arcs, I should not take half of it. I should be doubling it to go to the arcs. So arc AC should be 80. Arc AB should be 160. Arc BFC should be 120. But before I do that, remember what we set up at the beginning? Angle BAC is getting bisected, right? So each piece here should be 30 and 30, meaning those arcs should be 60 and 60. Everyone all right on how I got there? All right, now hopefully these go pretty quick and they're easy. First part, angle ABC. Oh, we did it already, 40 degrees. All right, B, how about arc BF? Oh, did it already. That's why this is so huge. Most of these can be answered right away. And then now I just need somebody's help with finding angle BEP. So B to E to P. Uh, 15, 15, central angle, No. inscribed, no. so then it's got to be a floater. All right, what arc does it belong to, John? Um, yeah. Which is how many degrees? 60. 60, and what about its vertical angles arc? 80. 80. And there you go. I'm not done talking yet either. Half of 140, so that's got to be 70 degrees. Right. This is why also it's important. To, let's just say total mind freeze. I forgot that it was a floater angle or I forgot the rule for a floater. Watch. Remember how we already labeled 30 and 40 in this triangle? How many degrees do I have so far? 70. That means the third angle has to be 110. And the angle next to it, BEP, is what with 110? Supplementary, linear pairs. I don't need a circle fact for everything. All right, so if you get stuck, try to find angles another way. All right, go ahead. Let's go. Get as much done as you can here in the next nine minutes so you don't have that much to take over break.